On today's episode, we're going to do a piece of digital art. This is episode number 38 of my Topaz Studio 2 Creative Toolbox. And stay tuned till the end. I'm going to show you how to make a digital frame. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, we're going to do some photo art. I'm going to use Photoshop's Neural Filter. And let's go ahead and launch Neural Filter first. I'm also going to use Topaz Studio too. But let's come up to Filter and let's launch the Neural Filters. We're going to use a filter in here called uh, Style Transfer. Now, I made a video before on Style Transfer, but we're going to use that today. Uh, so click on File Transfer. And we get these really cool different... Um, painterly type looks okay and right now we're seeing four different styles and it'll add these styles to your image so let's go to show more there's one in particular i want to work with today and that's this one right here now we have all kind of different types so let me just click through some of these so you can see them so you have all kind of different styles that you can transfer to your image now that looks really cool but i'm going to use this one right here now there's some things we can do here, like we can uh, run different passes on this. For instance, here's one pass, here's two passes. Basically what's happening here, it's getting a little more intense each time you run up in these passes here. But I'm going to make a painting out of this, uh, so I'm going to keep it on one pass. I want to keep it pretty uh, subtle, or pretty, uh, you know, not as much detail, I should say, is what I'm really trying to say here. Now you have an opacity, a style opacity slider, so you can pull this back and blend some of the original image back in with it if you want to. So you, there's a lot of different options in here. But one of the options I want to use today is preserve color. So if I click this one on, it's going to preserve the color of the original image, because I do like the colors in this image here. And that's looking really nice right there. And I like that. And uh, then we have some other things we can do. We can add more detail. Uh, we can add a background blur by pulling this up here. You can see the background will go like soft, but I don't want that. But there's a lot of really nice, cool things in here. We can adjust the brightness. And let's see, what was the other one? Focus subject. Watch, watch the chair and the flowers here when I click on focus subject. See what it does there? It gives it, you know, it draws your emphasis more into the subject. I'll shut it off. Now I'll turn it on. And it gets a little more painterly looking in there. So I kind of like that. And that's all I'm going to do with this right now. I'm going to go to output. I don't want to output it on a new layer. I'm just going to output it to the current layer. Click OK. And when I do, you'll notice that it just adds it right to that layer. Now I'm just going to rename this TS2 for Topaz Studio 2. Because the next thing I want to do is send this into Topaz Studio 2. All right, so now I'm going to come back to Filter, and we're going to go to Topaz Studio 2, and we will get started here. Now, I'm going to try just to go kind of fast through here and just uh, kind of illustrate how quickly you can turn something into a piece of photo art or a photo painting, whatever you want to call it, really. Let's come up here to Add Filter. Let's come down to the Impression Filter, and we will get started. That's the first brush here. Let's just stick with that for now. I'm going to change the uh, number of strokes to high, and you'll see the change in the image. And then, then I always like to come down to texture and um, go from background type solid to background, because sometimes you'll see some white white flecks of canvas in here. Sometimes that looks cool, but some, a lot of times I don't like it, so I'm going to go to original, and that just lets the original image show through. And now we're going to go to uh, brush size. Now, if I take the brush size and move it to the right, see it becomes more painterly looking, a little more abstract, making the brush strokes larger. And I'm thinking maybe somewhere around here. Then I'm going to come down to paint opacity, and I'm going to pull this to the right. And that makes the paint look a little bit thicker. Can you see that? If I go to the left, it's thinner. If I go to the right, it's a little more thicker. So it looks a little more like paint strokes on there, which is nice. And then, of course, we can go with paint volume. Let's pull this up and see what it does. And let me zoom in close so you can really see what's happening there. So let me take paint volume down, paint volume up. See, it's getting, uh, you can see these little textures that are starting to show through in here. Sometimes it really pays to pull in, you know, to, or to zoom into your image so you can see what's actually happening there. Okay, and that's cool, and that's adding more of a painterly look, so that's looking cool. And then we can come with uh, stroke rotation, and as we move this, you can see the paint strokes are starting to, you know, rotate. Can you see that? 
And depending on what kind of a look you're looking for, you can work with that. I don't think I want that, but then we have a rotation variation, so it'll kind of go in different different directions. And a lot of times I do like the variation better than the um, stroke rotation because it's more varied. You know, it's not all just going one direction or the other. And then we have uh, color variation. This is a good one. If you start to move this to the right, you'll start to pull some other colors into the uh, painting. And that's kind of nice, but it might be a little too strong. So I might add a little bit of that, but let me just pull it back. One, just a few little extra colors in there. I think it gives it a little bit more interest. What do you think? And let me know what you think in the comment section below. Um, I, I really love to hear from everyone. And let's see, let's play with the stroke width. Now, this is how wide the stroke will be. So I can move it to the right, make the strokes wider or less wide. And the secret here is just to play around with these things and get it looking the way you like it. And I think right around there. Now, here's the length of the stroke, like how long the strokes will be. And I don't know. I think, I think maybe somewhere right around in there. And then, of course, spill. If you take the spill and take it to the right, the paint will spill out. Can you see that, how it's spilling out? And if I take it to the left of zero, zero, it's not spilling either way. But if I move to the left of zero, maybe it's starting to spill inward. Kind of tightens things up a little bit. And I generally go to the right on this to spill it out. But this time, I think I'm going to spill it in. It kind of like, um, I don't know, kind of like uh, brings a little more of the detail out. In other words, if I move to the right, it becomes more abstract. If I move it into the left, I'm seeing a little more detail in there. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but I think you get the point of what I'm trying to say. Now, smudge is nice. If you move the smudge to the right, it'll start to make the painting look a little softer or a lot softer, depending how far you go to the right. And sometimes you want that for an abstract look. But I think what I might do is just add a little bit of that smudge in there just to, just to smooth it out, just a tiny wee bit. You know, and I'm like at a 0.03, not much there. Uh, I'm not going to mess with the coverage, but the painting progress, this is one I like to play with. So if I move this to the left, it brings the painting through the different stages. Like if you were actually painting this image, you know, you would start out the paint would look like this. You're blocking it in and you're adding more paint, you know. So what you can do here is go through like, it's kind of like a time lapse. You can go through here and see what it looks like at various stages of the painting process so just you know drag that slider through and if you find a point you like stop at that point you know let me go the whole way to the right i just want to see what my options are okay i might you know and you got to make these decisions here and you say okay i kind of like it i'm going to leave it right there now the other thing i want to do is I want to go and add, I want to add some texture. So let's zoom in a little bit here. And uh, we have all kind of different textures here that we can use. Whoops, what am I doing here? Let's go back down here. I'm going to take the texture strength. I'm going to start to move it to the right. And then this other texture size slider appears. So let's pull up, pull up on here to the right and see the texture in there. And then you can adjust the texture size by adjusting this slider. And then we can go through different textures. And sometimes I like these asphalt type looking textures. And I think I might go with this. Let me give it a little more strength here. Now let's zoom back out. Yeah, that looks cool with that texture on here. Let me pull the uh, strength to the left so you can see without it. And now let's pull it to the right. I like it. It adds that nice little texture effect in there. And I think it looks really cool. So I'm going to leave that on there. And then the last thing I want to do is I'm going to come up and... I'm going to go to a precision detail because I feel that the precision detail really works nicely when you're doing a painting. So I'm going to take the overall small detail and start to move it to the right and see how it just gets a little sharper in the smaller detailed areas. Now let's go to the de medium detail. And if you go too much, it, it'll look, you know, you'll get different looks like this looks kind of cool, right? But for me, for the, for the feeling I have today with this image, that's way too strong. So if I do medium detail, it's going to be very, my, you know, minute, not a lot. And let's try the overall large detail and see what kind of look we get. And I might just go with a little bit of overall all large detail, maybe somewhere around there. Now, we also have like uh, detail for shadows and highlights. And I think I'm going to see if I can bring some more detail out in this basket and chair if I go to shadows. And let's take the small detail up in the shadows and see what we get. Now let's try some medium detail in the shadow. 
I don't know, maybe just a little bit. I think that looks really good. Now we can click this eye right here. We can see the before and the after. So it gives that little extra detail, I think, really helps. Now I'm happy with the overall image, so all I need to do at this point is click Accept, and that'll send us right back into Photoshop. Let's take a look at the original image. Here's the original image, and now we have this painterly looking image, and I like it. I think what I'm gonna do is just throw a layer mask on here and get myself a black brush, and my paint is at 20% uh, opacity. And what I wanna do is just get rid of some of the painterly look off the flower in the basket, just to bring some of the original look back into it just to give it a little more focus on the basket and the flower in the foreground. Okay. And maybe a little on the, take a little off the chair right here, just like that. Just let a little bit of that show through. Now I'm going to hold the shift key down and click on the layer mask. There's the before the layer mask and there's after the layer mask. So it just brings a little bit of extra detail in here. And for an added bonus here, I thought, I'm going to show you how I make a digital frame in Photoshop. So what I want to do is pull this whole image together and I'm going to use a shortcut shift option or alt command or control E that pulls it all together. And then I'm going to uh, duplicate, duplicate that command J and I'll tell you why I'm doing that because I want to have two versions here or two copies here. The first one will be, I'll save this out as a PSD or a TIFF file with layers. So if I ever want to make a print off of this, I'll use this layer here to make the print. But if I want to put it online and show it as a framed image, I'll use this layer for that so, because this will have my digital frame on this particular layer. So I'm going to call it digital frame. If I could spell digital frame. And then we're going to send this into Topaz Studio 2. So we're going to come up to Filter. We'll launch Topaz Studio 2 again. And let's put this into a digital frame. All right. And this is simple to do. And I'm not going to get real detailed here. I'll do some other videos with a little more explanation. Okay. But let's click Add Filter. Let's come down here to Stylistic Digital Frame. And right now we have a digital frame. What I'm going to do here is come here to Frame Mat Ratio and watch the frame edge. I think it's a little too thin. I'd like to have it a little wider. So I'm going to pull this and it changes the frame mat ratio. Makes it a little wider and I think that looks pretty good there. Maybe not quite as wide right there. Now I don't like that blue color on there so much. So what I'm going to do is come down here to frame type color and I'm going to come here to frame color, click on this and depending if you're on Mac or Windows, you'll get a different type of color uh, let's call it a tool. You'll get some kind of a color tool that comes up. I'm going to get this color picker right here and I'm going to sample one of the colors in the image. And I think I'm going to go with one of the darker green colors and choose that like this. Yeah, something like that looks pretty good. And then you can take this slider here and make it darker if you want or lighter, depending what you want. Or you could take this and move it into the center and take some of the color away from it. Maybe somewhere right around there. That looks pretty good. Do I want maybe a smidge lighter or darker? I don't know. I think that looks okay. I'm going to be happy with that. And now all I have to do is send this back to Photoshop. So I'm going to come up here to the menu, click accept. That sends us back into Photoshop. So now I have my digital frame. So if I want to put this online... I have a digital frame. I can shut this layer off and then I can make a print from this layer if I want to. So I'd save it, like I said, as a PSD or a TIFF with layers. Well, there it is, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this one today. You know what? I did this uh, video a little bit different. I just kind of ran straight through. I didn't think much about it. I just wanted to do a really quick painting just to show you how fast and easy it is that you can turn just the basic image into a beautiful piece of digital art. If you enjoyed the tutorial today, please give it a like, share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly, and I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.